In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of good health and peace that we have enjoyed for so many years. As we find ourselves in this time of crisis today, we ask for your divine intervention and mercy to be upon each of us. Come and guide the minds of those working to discover a treatment to the COVID-19 virus. Grant them wisdom, knowledge, and clarity of mind, so that all peoples will be free from the threat of this ailment. We also pray for the healthcare workers that are standing in the front line of this battle. Father, we thank you for their hearts of service putting the needs of society before their own, generously responding to the cry of your people. We ask that you will grant them strength and protection as they give of themselves in selfless service. May you fill them with your Holy Spirit as they work to be your healing hands and feet. Father, we also surrender to you all those who have been afflicted with the virus. Grant them your healing grace, merciful Father, so that they may recover swiftly and continue to be witnesses of your love in their lives. Mother Mary, we ask for your intercession in this great time of need. Cover each of us with your blue mantle of protection so that we may be preserved in good health to continue to glorify your Son, Jesus Christ. We make this prayer through Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sang awit ng Pilipinas. Ang pagkakaw ay hinatang sa lakaw 
once more, I'd want to extend a warm greeting to everyone. This is a significant day since we're conducting this orientation to discuss the relevance of the COVID-19 vaccine. But first, here are some reminders that we need to keep in mind during our orientation. For students, like and comment below your full name as well as your grade and section. Let us also adhere to the current principles, principles, and messages. Also, please refrain from posting unnecessary remarks. Thank you. At this juncture, let us listen to our Vice President and Principal, Mr. Zacharias A. Quintin Jr., to deliver his opening message. The Vice Principal for the High School Department, Ms. Adelita de la Cruz. To the Vice Principal for the Grade School Department, Ms. Maria Victoria Kabuag. To the faculty, to the speaker, parents, students. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Corinthians. Kumusta po tayo lahat? Well, I hope everyone is doing well today. Well, it has been almost two years now since the pandemic started. We all have been in challenging times, especially in acquiring vaccines to protect ourselves and our loved ones. Medyo nung una pa nga ay pahirapan pa dahil sa kakaunti ang dumarating na bakuna sa bansa. Even the school purchased its own vaccines for its personnel, only to be returned and refunded due to vaccine scarcity at the time and government regulations. Napakahalaga ang ginagampanan ng bakuna sa pagpigil ng pagkalat ng virus. Ngayon, andito na ang bakuna para sa mga minor de edad, sa ating mga anak, sa ating mga estudyante. Kaisa ang paaralan sa pagsisigurado na mga mag-aaral nito ay mapapakunahan sa madaling panahon. Nangangailangan na po na mapakunahan na lahat. The schools were tasked by the government to facilitate the initial phase of the vaccination process and that is registration, requirement dissemination, and informational seminar regarding the safety of vaccines. Today is the orientation talk about the pediatric vaccination, its safety and its process on how our children will receive Recording in progress. Also, we will discuss the process, requirements, and steps towards vaccination day. It is our privilege to have a resource speaker, not only the parent to two Corinthian students, but the doctor in pediatrics who will discuss about what we and our children should know about vaccines. We are very blessed and thankful for the community participation and generosity, especially during this challenging time. Muli, maraming maraming salamat po sa atin. At magandang umaga po. Thank you so much, Mr. Quintin Jr. for the opening message. COVID-19 vaccines are being deployed in countries around the world, bringing new hope to the fight against the global pandemic. In this regard, we are conducting a COVID vaccine orientation to inform us on the importance of the vaccine. So, without further ado, allow Ms. Maria Carmela C. Cadua, the High School Department Student Activities and Academic Coordinator, to introduce our speaker. Thank you, Ms. Acosta. Good morning, everyone, to our administrators, dear parents, students, and teachers. Allow me to introduce our resource speaker for this morning. She graduated from Manila Central University with a degree in medical technology as her pre-med course. Afterwards, she pursued the College of Medicine at Manila Central University, Philemon D. Tanchonko Senior. And she also had her residency training in pediatrics at MCU FDTMF Hospital. 
Currently, she is a uniformed member of the Philippine National Police assigned to the Philippine National Police General Hospital Department of Pediatrics. And she also a part of the faculty member of MCU College of Medicine. Let us welcome our resource speaker for this morning, who is also one of our Corinthian parents, Dr. Celeste A. Asilo. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ma'am Kadwa. Good day, everyone. Okay. Good day, everyone, to the administrators, faculty, teachers, and uh, teacher, parents, and students. Good morning, po. Uh, if I may share my screen. So, uh, visible na po yung screen. Okay. So, again, good day, everyone. So, today I am tasked to uh, do a lecture about COVID-19 vaccine, its safety among pediatric population. So, why do we need the COVID vaccine? So, saan ba lahat nagsimula? Last year, March 2020, we, heard, we began the community quarantine to control the spread of the disease because of the pandemic. So, what is a pandemic? So, pandemic is an event in which a disease is spread across several countries and affects a large number of people. So, it is not just in a particular place, pero ang pinag-uusapan natin ay yung buong mundo. So, ano ba yung nagkakos ng pandemic since last year? It is the COVID-19 virus or the coronavirus-19. Before the COVID-19, there are already human coronaviruses that were first identified in the mid-60s. 1960s, meron na pong coronavirus. Uh, the recent coronavirus that were identified was, of course, the COVID-19, MERS-CoV, and the SARS-CoV. So what about the coronavirus-19? So it is a respiratory disease caused by SARS-CoV-2, which is a newly discovered uh, virus in 2019 that is thought to spread mainly through respiratory droplets and airborne. So some people who are infected may not have symptoms, uh, yung tinatawag natin na asymptomatic. But people who have symptoms, the illness can range from mild to severe. So mostly uh, high-risk people are up adults 65 years old, and those people with uh, uh, underlying medical conditions. But then people 12 years and older should get the COVID-19 vaccines to prevent getting and spreading the illness. So in this picture, the surveillance analysis of COVID-19 in children nationwide or Salvation, it is a, a reported case as of September 30, 2021. So we have a 1,811 reported cases of COVID-19 confirmed. Among those, mostly are from the male population, about 56.5%, more than 10% from the female. So most cases are between one to five years old, followed by 11 to 15 years old, and 81.1% of the reported cases uh, uh, recovered and 8.2% have unfortunately died. So mostly, uh, those patients were hospitalized about 88.7% and out of 11.3% uh, were treated as outpatient. For the disease severity, mostly mild cases about 42.1%, moderate cases were 24.5%, there are also severe and critical cases. Among those infected with COVID-19 has co-infections. Mostly they have sepsis or infections to the go, dengue fever, tuberculosis, and healthcare-associated pneumonia. So among the clinical manifestations of COVID-19 in children, mostly are, as I said, symptomatic, 82.7%, mostly a fever, cough, colds, some patients has this decreased appetite, walang gano kumain, difficulty of breathing, merong vomiting, loose stools, 
abdominal pain, some has seizure episode, some uh, complaints of sore throat, muscle pain, loss of smell, loss of taste, headache, and some are noted with rashes. So out of those uh, cases, 52.8% has abnormal chest x-ray findings. Those that needs oxygen support, 34.9% uh, were intubated. Those are critical cases of COVID-19. So at present, uh, the COVID-19 vaccines with FDA, EUA, are proven safe and effective for children. So for now, Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna is approved by the FDA. So we always hear, hear mRNA vaccines. Actually, there are lots of uh, vaccines uh, from different companies silang nagawa. Merong from inactivated virus, weakened virus, or yung mRNA vaccines. So mRNA or the messenger RNA was discovered in the early 1960s. The research into how mRNA could be delivered into cells was developed in the 1970s. So it was first developed for the deadly Ebola virus that is found in African countries. But since it is only limited in Africa, it had no, it had no commercial development in the United States. So at present, vaccine manufacturers are developing mRNA, mRNA vaccines to protect against other respiratory viruses such as the flu and also for HIV. And there are also research uh, for the cancer uh, disease. mRNA vaccine also being studied. So before we go to the COVID vaccine per se, uh, siguro we should learn how to how does our immune system work? So, paano ba natin talaga nilalabanan yung virus na pumapasok sa system natin? So, you can see this, uh, the, this virus will uh, enter your body and will attach into yourself and inject a DNA or RNA, which is a blueprint of, that contains instructions. So, once na nag-inject na ang virus ng blueprint sa ating cell, it will instruct the virus to uh, spread and copy, make more copies of the virus para kumalat sa katawan natin. So when the virus spreads, syempre meron pa rin tayong defense system na lalabas. So yung ating defense system will detect the virus. But then, uh, before yung defense system natin mag-attack, mag, uh, it takes several days para matutunan niya kung paano labanan yung virus sa ating katawan. Kasi first time lang niya ina-encounter. So, yun, while the defense system is learning how to attack, the virus replicates in days. So, doon na lumalabas yung signs and symptoms depende sa illness na uh, dinadulot sa atin ng virus. Yung fever, cough, colds. So, uh, after a few days, pag na, 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 tuto na yung, natutunan na ng defense system natin kung paano atakihin yung virus, it will attack the virus per se. So it will attach the virus marking, marking it to destroy. So eventually, masisira na ng defense system natin yung virus. So now, yung MRA, mRNA vaccines naman, paano ba uh, gumagana yung mRNA vaccines sa atin? So nakikita nyo yung virus pitch, most, uh, mostly yung picture ng virus, meron siyang spikes. So, daw yan yung spike protein. So, the researchers will get that spike protein, gagayahin niya, to produce yung, uh, yung blueprint. The researchers will take the blueprint of the virus and isolate the part of that spike. So, making the mRNA. So, that will contain the instruction to build the spike of the coronavirus. So, not actually part lang siya ng virus. Not not the whole virus itself. So the mRNA will copy it. And then this mRNA in the cell will instruct the cell to produce those spikes of the virus. So once the virus uh, produce, uh, once the spikes are produced, again, darating na ulit yung defense system natin. So uh, ma-identify nyo ulit yung mga virus and after a few days, eventually, sisirain niya ulit yung virus. 
and pati na rin yung naiwan na mRNA coming from the vaccine. So after that, meron tayong tinatawag na B cell or memory cell. So yun yung nagiging defense system natin na after few months or years na nag sa atin, pag meron ulit na new virus na umatake sa ating system, mabilis siyang magpo-produce ng uh, depensa para masira niya yung virus. So it will not take days para masira agad yung virus na pumasok kasi meron nang nakahanda yung katawan natin na ma-identify yung virus na yun from the vaccine na binigay sa atin nung, uh, for example, this one, the COVID vaccine. So this picture, you can see it from the DOH uh, uh, Facebook page. So mga frequently asked questions. So at now, the pediatric age group na uh, pwede nang mabigyan ng COVID vaccine are the 12 to 17 years old uh, population. Initially, with comorbidities, but at present, uh, yung the rest of the pediatric population na yung pwede mabigyan ng COVID vaccine. So for now, tanging Moderna at Pfizer lang ang pwedeng mapagbigyan ng 12 to 7 years old na mga uh, bata na merong approved EUA from FDA. So ano nga ba yung benepisyo? So mas mataas ang chance ng komplikasyon dulot ng COVID-19 sa mga batang may comorbidity. So kaya sila yung una initially na binakunahan para maprotektahan sila sa malubhang komplikasyon or kamatayan ng dulot ng COVID-19. So these are the common side effects. Just like the other vaccines, syempre dun sa injection site, merong pain, redness, and swelling. Pwede rin makaramdam ng pagkapagod, sakit ng ulo, muscle pain, chills, fever, and nausea. Just, it, it means na nag-e-effect na rin yung vaccines sa ating katawan. So meron bang serious and non-serious adverse event yung injection? So ang serious adverse, adverse event, yun yung mga signs and symptoms after vaccination na pwede kang maospital at meron din naman yung na-mention ko na non-serious yung lagnat, pananakit ng kadawan, pananakit ng ulo. Regarding naman sa complication ng bakuna or yung malalang reaction, pwede rin magkaroon ng reaction uh, gaya ng allergic reaction, myocarditis or pericarditis pagkatapos sa mabakunahan. Pero ayon pa rin sa FDA, 98% sa mga nabakunan ang hindi nakaranas ng reaction or side effect matapos magpabakuna. So, ayon naman sa US FDA, 2 out of dun sa 100,000 na nabakunahan sa Amerika ay nakaranas ng myocarditis or pericarditis. Ito po yung nagkakaroon ng pamamaga sa parte ng puso na nagdudulot ng pagsikip o pagkabog ng dibdib o kaya paghirap sa paghinga. Pero most daw ng cases na yun ay eventually naman siyang nawawala. Basta ma, uh, agaran lang siyang ma-identify. Kaya after vaccination, meron pa rin pong monitoring. At syempre, para rin po talaga ma-address yung mga uh, worries ng parents and other uh, communities, ang Philippine Society of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology ay nag naglabas din po ng um, guidelines kung paano ma-assess yung mga vaccine prior to vaccination. So meron silang tinatawag na low risk, moderate risk, high risk. Yung mga low risk na vaccines ay pwedeng mag-proceed na with vaccination. No? So kung ikaw naman ay ma-categorize as moderate risk, meron lang mga precautionary before the vaccination. Siyempre, kung high risk, uh, meron rin contraindication. So immediately, kung nagkaroon ng allergic reaction, may naka-standby naman tayo ng mga medical teams sa vaccination site. And for the second vaccine, maaring ibang bakuna nang maibigay sa vaccine. So ito yon. So for assessment of risk for adverse reaction to the second dose, so ko yun nga, may previous history of uh, severe allergic reaction sa first dose, usually din defer na and another brand will be given. So this one is the health assessment algorithm. Actually, same lang po yung sa Moderna and sa uh, Pfizer-BioNTech. So meron din kayong bibigay na copies to sa inyo. 
a uh, doctor will screen the vaccine on site. So lahat naman may uh, guidelines kung pwede ba siyang bakunahan or uh, pwedeng i-defer or for close monitoring while uh, in the vaccination site. So kung meron siyang allergy sa pagkain, itlog, gamot, asthma, or hika, pwede pa rin siya mabigyan ng bakuna. Pero yun nga, may monitoring after the vaccination. So kung may sakit kaugnay ng pagdurugo or bleeding tendencies, gagamitan lang siya ng mas maliit pa na needle gauge para uh, may iwasan yung pagdurugo. So na, kung na-diagnose siya previously ng multi-system inflammatory syndrome, actually ito po yung komplikasyon ng COVID sa pediatric population. So pwedeng ipagpaliban muna yung bakuna. Dapat recovered siya fully 90 days after ng kanyang uh, um, recovery from MISC. Kung at present Nung day ng vaccination, ang BP niya ay 160 pataas, over 100. Tapos meron siya signs and symptoms ng pananakit ng ulo, blurring of vision, shortness of breath, chest pain. So definitely hindi siya mababakunahan. Uh, I-refer agad siya sa doktor or dadalhin sa ER. Kung naman siya ay yun nga, may 160 over 100 na BP, pero walang signs and symptoms ng headache, blurring of vision, chest pain, shortness of breath, pwede mo na siyang i-monitor dun sa site um, hanggang sa bumaba yung kanyang uh, BP. Kung bumaba po ang BP, pwede siyang mabakunaan. So, other, basta meron siyang active na uh, fever, coughing, colds, uh, mas maganda po, ma-defer muna, huwag mo na mabakunan. At least run well yung bata pag nabakunahan. So ito, kung may exposure siya 14 days ago, pwede pa rin bakunahan basta natapos na po yung quarantine 14 days na. Nakatanggap ba siya ng bakuna 14 days ago or may plan na magpabakuna sa susunod na 14 days, pwede siyang mabakunahan basta po may 14 days interval from the COVID vaccine. Kung nag-positive rin naman po at kasalukuyang ginagamot pa at hindi pa siya recovered, re-reschedule lang po yung vaccine hanggang yun, ngayon na mention kanina 14 days, at least 14 days dapat kasi po recovered. Yung mga nasalina na dugo previously, so dapat 90 days interval naman po. Pwede siyang mabakunahan. Ito yun sa mga adult naman na po tayo, yung mga kung nagbubuntis mo first trimester, mas maiging uh, uh, pal, uh, second or th third trimester, pwede po siyang mabakunahan. Ito naman po yung mga sakit na kung may HIV, cancer, ongoing chemotherapy, ongoing steroids, nakarata yung pasyente or mayroong autoimmune disease, uh, kailangan muna po na medical clearance sa kanilang attending physician or sa kanilang doktor prior to vaccination. So bakit po ba natin ito uh, kailangan gawin? So bakit tayo nagkaroon ng uh, orientation ngayon regarding sa COVID vaccine? Kasi alam po namin, ako as a doctor, alam po namin na marami pa rin pong parents na nagkakaroon ng agam-agam para magpabakuna. So syempre, kung meron tayong katanungan, ano, paano natin i-address yung mga questions? So dapat i-process natin yung ating mga uh, katanungan Tapos kumausap tayo or magtanong tayo sa mga may authority, sa expert. Uh, I-take advantage natin yung ating technology. Pwede po tayong mag-search. Just be sure na yung ating uh, masa-search ay yung talagang uh, may authority para dun sa COVID vaccine. So we should um, learn na paano, ma paano ba yung sinasabi na yung siba may mga fake news or hindi reliable na sources, we make sure na reliable po yung sources. So from then, pag na-process natin na maayos yung question, nakapaghanap tayo, nakapagtanong na maayos, syempre, yung decision natin, liliwanag. So kung may maliwanag ka tayong decision, of course, syempre, tama na yung ating magiging decision. At alam naman po natin na para talaga sa kabutihan yung uh, ginagawang itong ng programa ng gobyerno. Kasi di ba initially nga, Nung nagkaroon ng pandemic, ang pinipray natin na sana matapos na yung COVID, sana magkaroon na ng gamot, sana magkaroon na ng bakuna para dun sa, sa COVID virus. 
So, ito na po yung pagkakataon na para natin uh, tuloy-tuloy na tayo ulit makamove dun sa ating uh, problema ngayon sa COVID-19. Kasi ang target talaga po yung, alam ko naririnig din po nyo yung herd immunity, at least 70 to 80% of the population sana po mabakunahan. Kasi kung hindi, meron man tayong kasama sa bahay na lalo na ngayon mga cancer patients, kunyari, or talagang mababay immune system na hindi sila mababakunahan, at least tayo yung mapoprotekta sa kanila. No, it's not just yung tayo lang, hindi lang mga anak natin. Ito rin yung para sa ibang tao na protection natin. Yung kumbaga tayo as, as one, hindi lang sarili natin yung isipin natin, kundi yung pangkalahatan din po. Kasi lahat tayo, alam ko, the, meron nga po, gaya po na mention, meron po akong dalawang anak. So, nahihi, alam ko, nahihirapan din sila dahil nasa bahay lang sila. So, ang hirap lumabas. Yung kanilang social, um, social ano nila ay, ano na rin, hirap na hirap na rin sila. Unless yun nga, gusto na rin talagang bumalik sa school. Pero syempre, uh, unti-unti lang natin, step by step yung pagbalik natin sa uh, yung dati natin nagawian. So, ito na sana yung uh, magiging big step natin na mabakonahan tayo kung pwede naman tayo mabakonahan po. So, ito lang po yung implementing guidelines ng DOH. So, yun nga, inuna po nila may mga comorbidities. So, naka-mention naka, na po po dyan yung mga JCPD, Uh, those with seizure disorder, may mga diabetes, hypothyroidism, yung mga hypertensive, yung mga obese. Actually, nag-first roll out po kasi kami sa PNP General Hospital ng Saturday. Meron po kami yung three cases ng yung may autism and seizure disorder. So, very willing silang nagpabakuna. After monitoring, and until now, wala naman po um, naging problem yung yung mga pasyente po namin na nabakunahan. Wala pa naman kaming cases ng adverse event following the immunization. So, yan po yung mga diseases na pwedeng mabigyan pa rin naman po. So, uh, requirements of, for vaccination, siyempre, yun po, medic, kung may comorbidities yung pasyente, kailangan ng medical certification from the attending physician or yung kanilang uh, doctor po na makapagsasabi na pwede silang mabigyan na bakuna and with, they are stable to receive the vaccine. So, yun po. Thank you all for listening. Thank you so much po, Dr. Asilo, for the very insightful talk. So at this moment, we're open to questions and clarifications on the subject at hand. The questions about the topic will be answered by Dr. Asilo, and the details about the vaccination process will be discussed by Ms. Adelita A. De La Cruz. Dear parents and students, you may utilize the comment section for questions and clarification. Um, Dr. Asilo, my question po from a student. Yes po. Actually, related, um, parang same po yung content ng question nila. Is it safe po ba na magpa-vaccine daw po while may, may shot po sila ng Tengvac siya? Tapos yung isang student naman po, safe din daw po ba if nakareceive ng shot ng pneumonia po? So yung sa, yun, as I mentioned po, yung Uh, kung may previous immunization, at least 14 days interval po. So, kung yung pneumonia vaccine po ay more than 14 days na pong nabigay, pwede na pong mapabukunahan. Kunyari naman po, uh, ngayon siya nabukuna ng COVID vaccine. So, kung gusto niya pong magpabakuna ng kunyari, pneumococcal or flu vaccine, wait uh, after two weeks naman po para mabakunahan siya ng uh, pneumococcal or other vaccine. Banggitin ko na rin po kasi iba yung anti-rabies anti vaccine po. Kasi kunyari, na, nakagat siya ng aso, kaka-injection lang ng COVID vaccine. Pwede pa rin po mabigyan ng anti-rabies kasi po, uh, yun naman po yung magiging problem, yung rabies naman po, rabies virus. Baka lang po kasi magkaroon ng, ng, ng kalituan. Kasi sinabi, pagbagong bakuna ng COVID, hindi pwede 
mabakunahan ng kahit ano pang ibang klase ng bakuna. Pero yun po kasi, kailangan maagapan rin yung rabies virus. Anytime pwede pong mabigyan ng rabies vaccine, anti-rabies vaccine. And sa Demvaxia po, uh, wala naman pong nabanggit rin, di naman po nabanggit sa DOH guidelines na may special ano po doon na kung may Demvaxia ay hindi po pwedeng mabigyan ng, ng COVID vaccine. Wala naman po nabanggit sa DOH guidelines. Thank you po, ma'am. Thank you po, doktora. So, kula na pong question. The other details about the vaccination process will be discussed by Mom de la Cruz. But before that, my question po sent sa ating comment section. Under pa rin daw po ba ng Cormo yung may allergy sa gamot pag nung baby po siya? Ayun, comor, kung under po ng comorbidities. Actually, basta yes, po, po may allergy, i-mention lang po sa doctor na screener on-site. Kasi po yun nga, kung may allergy po, uh, for monitoring pa rin po. Actually, with allergies or walang allergy po, for monitoring pa rin po sa vaccination site after nung... Uh, in the injection po ng vaccine. At least 15 to 30 minutes po. Uh, may monitor muna. Okay po. Thank you po. Another question po. Um, after naman daw po ng kanilang vaccine, safe daw po ba na kumain ng malalansa? Uh, yes po. Wala naman pong bawal na kainin or inumin uh, kung after COVID vaccine po. So, kung may questions pa po, pwede po tayong mag-send sa comment section, students and parents. Um, this question naman po, if, the, if someone didn't get a second shot of the second dose for COVID vaccine, Within the recommended time po, ano daw po yung pwedeng gawin? Um, actually, by the DOH guidelines po, merong, actually hanggang until 6 months, yung uh, second dose, pwede pa rin pong itigay. Kaya, kung na-miss po yung schedule ng second dose, magkipag-coordinate pa rin po sa vaccination site para po mabigay yung second dose. Kasi sayang naman po kung nabigyan na ng first dose para mas complete po yung protection, kompletohin pa rin po yung two doses ng COVID vaccine. Thank you po ulit. So paano po magpa-vaccine? For that, um, the details about vaccination will be discussed by Ms. Adelita A. De La Cruz. Again, thank you, Dr. Celeste Asilo, for a very insightful information about the COVID vaccine, especially po sa ating mga high school students. So my part is to share with you parents and students the registration process of Valenzuela City. So let me share my screen. So let's start with the registration process. As mentioned also by our speaker, the, uh, the age the 12, 12 to 17 years old students from private school. Then parents must register to the Venezuela City Private School Students Health Profile Google form that will sent by the school. So the first link uh, was uh, posted last September 27. So nag post po tayo ng link para po sa registration nung una po nung last uh, September 27 at uh, recently last November 17 nag-share po ulit tayo ng new link para sa mga parents na na-miss po nila yung first registration schedule. So within the week po until next week po pwede pa po tayong mag-register sa ating Google form. So the next process is the BC box will send to the school the list of registered students. So lahat po ng mga nag-register, bibigyan po kami ng kopya ng ating Valenzuela LGU 
para po ma-inform po yung mga bata kung sino po yung mga nagpalista. So by Monday po, uh, uulitin po ng advisor kung sino po yung mga magpapabakuna to confirm baka meron po kasing nakapag-register na nung una at nabakunahan na po para mas maayos po ang ating listahan. So school must conduct a parents orientation to discuss the vaccination rollout. So ngayon pong umaga, ginawa po natin yan na uh, nagkaroon po tayo ng orientation. So school will send the list of students who are willing and with complete requirements. So ano-ano po yung mga requirements? So later sabihin ko po sa inyo. So then the BC box will check the submitted list. The BC box will send the confirmation text. So makakareceive po tayo ng text galing po sa Valenzuela. Nakalagay po sa text ang date of vaccination, the vaccination site, at kung ano po yung mga requirements. So basically po, kung ano po yung niregister po ninyong number, doon po magte-text yung Valenzuela. Okay? So, next slide please. So, during the vaccination day process, so students together with their parents or guardian will go to the school. Then, the assigned busy vaccinator staff at school will check all the requirements and the condition of the students before going into the vaccination. So, students with lacking requirements or with sickness like cough and cold will be sub uh, subject for rescheduling. So, in case nakalisip po tayo ng schedule ng vaccine at uh, may ubo o may sipon po yung ating anak, ay i-reschedule po yun ng, ng, ng assign po sa schedule ng vaccination. So after checking the requirements, students and parents may proceed to the vaccination site. Okay, it is important na ano po ba yung mga requirements. So these are the list of requirements. Unang-una po, syempre ang edad po dapat ng anak natin ay 12 to 17 years old. So uh, a letter coming from the LGU of Valenzuela, uh, Valenzuela that will serve as a proof of his vaccination appointment. So kailangan po muna may matanggap po tayong schedule sa, sa cellphone o may text po tayo na na-receive galing po sa Valenzuela. Kasi pag wala po yun, hindi po tayo ma-entertain dahil schedule po talaga yung pagbabaksin. So kailangan po nating i-provide sa ating mga anak yung photocopy po ng kanilang birth certificate Photocopy po ng valid ID ng parent or guardian. Kung hindi naman po guardian ang kasama, uh, meron, pong, uh, meron po siyang companion, kailangan po mag-issue po ang parent ng kanilang authorization kasama po ang kanilang valid ID. Photocopy po ng valid ID ng estudyante. Kung wala po silang ID, pwede naman po magpagawa o gagawan po natin ng certificate of enrollment yung estudyante. Kung ang anak po natin ay nabibilang sa may mga comorbidities o comorbidities, kailangan po tayo mag-present ng medical certificate galing po sa ating mga doktor. At, at importante po na meron din po tayong Valenzuela o Valtrace QR code. Ito po yung vaccination site. Makikita po ninyo, i-share po namin. Dito po ito sa West Event Space. Sa Tiga Bukawi po, ang mga mag-aaral po sa Bukawi, Bulacan, may schedule na po tayo ng vaccination. November 29 po tayo sa Dr. Yanga Elementary School. So ganyan din po, lahat po na nagpalista, na, na nagpalista sila lamang po ang maibibigay ang pangalan sa sa vaccination sa schedule sa November 29. So kung meron pa pong magpapalista, uh, sabihin po sa advisor para maisama po ang pangalan ng ating mga anak. Okay. Ito po yung sample text na marereceive po natin sa Valenzuela. I-inform po kayo kung anong, anong date po yung schedule, anong oras, at kung saan po ang vaccination site. Dadalhin po, gaya ng mga sinabi ko po kanina sa mga bata po, kailangan po nila ng valid ID. Pwede naman po yung ID po nila last year kung wala po silang latest ID. Pero pwede rin po kayong mag-request sa school. Ready po ang school na mag-issue ng ID para sa ating mga mag-aaral. 
kailangan din pong dalhin ang birth or baptismal certificate ng bata. Kung may kapansanan po ang bata, kailangan po natin dalhin ang medical certificate na pirmado ng doktor. Next slide, please. Ito po ang mga paalala. Dapat po dumating po tayo sa vaccination site 45 minutes bago po magsimula o bago po sa ating appointment time. Magsuot ng face mask at face shield. Ipotocopy po ang lahat ng requirements na dadalhin. Dalhin din po ang original at ipakita po ang text message na na-receive na po natin galing sa Valenzuela LG. Ito po yung sample o et na form po na pipirmahan or parent consent bago po bakunahan ng bata. Importante po na may kasamang magulang o guardian po ang bata dahil pipirma po tayo ng consent bago po sila bakunahan. So, pakita ko po yung sample parental consent. Ayan po yan, nakalag nakalagay po dyan ang mga possible effects ng bakuna after po mabigyan ng bakuna ang ating mga anak. So, importante po na mabasa po ng guardian o ng parent kung sino man po ang kasama ng bata bago po siya bakunahan. Okay. Kung nabasa po at maliwanag po sa magulang, ayan po, pipirmahan nyo na po yan at yung date po kung kailan po tayo nakaschedule na mabakunahan ng ating anak. So, yan po ang um, uh, paraan o proseso ng pagbabakuna na gagawin, na gagawin po dito sa, sa Valenzuela. So, importante po na nakapag-register po kayo. Ulitin ko po, nakapag-register po at kailangan po complete po ang ating mga requirements. Uli po, maraming salamat. Thank you po, Ma'am De La Cruz, for the details about the vaccination. Um, Dr. Asilo, may clarification lang po ulit about po dun sa vaccine. Uh, ang tanong po is, kailangan pa daw po ba ng booster if hindi po Pfizer yung na-ishot um, na po sa kanila na vaccine? Ah, sa ngayon po kasi yung, ah, yung booster shot na binibigay ngayon. Sa ngayon okay. po kasi booster shot, na recently lang na napayagan po ng DOH or dun sa mga adult lang po muna. So for the pediatric population, uh, yung first and second dose pa lang po ng Pfizer and Moderna po ang ibibigay. About sa booster shot, siguro po maghihintay pa rin po muna tayo ng advice from the DOH. Okay po. So once again, thank you po Dr. Asilo and Ma'am De La Cruz. It is vital that we understand the significance of the COVID-19 vaccination because knowledge really is power. That is why it is essential that we hold this type of orientation in order to discuss matters like this, which are beneficial for all of us. So at this point, let's move on to the presentation of the Certificate of Appreciation followed by the closing, the closing rather, message from Ms. Adelita A. De La Cruz, Vice Principal in the High School Department. Thank you, Ma'am Liana Costa. Certificate of Appreciation is given to Dr. Celeste A. Asilo for her valuable support to Corinthian School activities by sharing her time and expertise as distinguished speaker in the COVID-19 vaccine orientation held in Corinthian School, Valenzuela City, given this 19th day of, day of November 2021, signed yours truly, Edelita A. De La Cruz, and Vice President and Principal, Mr. Zacharias A. Quintin, Jr. Once again, thank you po, Dr. Asilo. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you din po. Thank you for the invite. As a closing part, uh, once again, good morning. On behalf of Corinthian School, I would like to express our appreciation
once again, good morning. On behalf of Corinthian School, I would like to express our appreciation to our speaker this morning, Dr. Asilo. Thank you for your valuable time for, as our speaker on the COVID vaccine orientation, orientation for the high school students and parents. And also our gratitude to all who attended in this informational talk. I am certain that through this orientation, it helped the parents and students to lessen their fear, worry, and anxiety about the COVID vaccine. What Dr. Asilo shared this morning helped us to have a better understanding about the COVID vaccine for our children. With our mission to provide holistic development to learners, rest assured that Corinthian School will always be a partner of your parents, especially for the safety of your children. Muli po, let, let us all be safe at magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat. Thank you po, ma'am, for the closing message. And once more, would like to express our gratitude for your informative discussion, Dr. Asilo. I hope that the topic that was discussed during today's orientation would be beneficial to all of us. Thank you for your time and remember to stay safe at all times.